So you're working on a scene like this. You made some walls with the, with the Unreal Engine's new like level building system, right? Where you can just stretch it and it's like really easy to make like simple shaped uh, objects, like a public bathroom like here. And then you download a really fucking nice texture from Quixel. But then when you apply it, you realize it's all stretched. So you open up the instance and then you adjust the tiling. So now it looks something like this. And once you set the tiling, you apply it to another wall, but then you realize it fucked up the tiling because the proportions are not matching. The size of the two walls are not matching. And also, if I wanna just make this wall a little longer or make this a little longer, everything is stretching. But very not, Noble Knight. I have just the right spell for you. So let me show you how to word align your textures. So now that I have this material, I can just pretty much extend the material and the tiling is going to be the same everywhere. So how can you make this material? It's actually pretty easy. So you open up the folder where your Megascan material is. I deleted the Megascan material because we won't need it. Um, you open up the material, you, you open up the folder where your textures are for that Megascan material you want to use, and then you create a new material. And then, as you would, you put in the textures, but you won't connect it to anything right now. So this would go to the base color, this would go to the, each channel would go to like ambient, uh, roughness and metallic, I believe, and then the normal goes to the normal, right? So now, how can you make it word aligned? It's actually pretty easy. You just press tab and you write word aligned. And then you see a lot of options, but you really need three. So what we need is word aligned texture that we are going to use for single texture nodes. So if you have a roughness channel that is only the roughness channel, so you put in the RGB channel of that node, then you use this texture. Or for example, if you have a base color where you use the RGB, and not the individual channels, then you then, then, then you select this word line texture. If you have a texture sample where you have to use multiple uh, channels in it, so I use the red for the ambience, I use the green for the roughness, and I use the blue for the metallic, then what you can do is that you get the same node, but with a little twist. You look for separate channels, so like that. And what this does, is it separates the R, the G, and the B channel, so we can just properly connect it. And also, for the normal, again, you look for the word aligned, but then as you can see, there's a word aligned normals as well, so you just wanna check the word aligned normals. Um, so that's that. I haven't really been experiencing with word aligned reflections. I believe that that probably goes for like it, I probably has to do something with refractions and, and things. I'm not quite sure, but uh, for this tutorial, we won't even need it. So how can we make this work? Well, you can't just plug it in, right? So what we can do is right click the texture and convert it to texture object. And we do this for every single one. We convert it to texture object. And now that this, these are texture objects, now we can actually connect these to the right channels, which is basically always the, the, the top one. Now, we just connect the, the base color to the bit. Oh, you always wanna uh, use the X, Y, Z. Well, depend on your project, but you always wanna try it first using the X, Y, Z. And then once you experience with it and you see that something's wrong, then you might wanna try just Z or just do X, Y. But in general, you always wanna use the X, Y, Z. So X, Y, Z, R goes to the ambient for me. Uh, XYZ uh, green goes to the roughness and XYZ blue goes to the metallic right here. And for normal, you again want to use the XYZ texture. You don't want to use these. Um, and then let's see what this does. So now we got our PBR material back, as you can see. And now if I apply this material here, it's really, really, really dense. And this is because our texture tiling is 64, 64 by 64 by 64. So you, you kind of have to think about it a little weird 
because 64 is basically one, but if you wanna, if you have a texture coordinate that is one and you wanna make it larger, when you wanna make the texture larger, you divide it basically. So you, you write 0.5 and that's, and that's half the size of the original texture. Here you have to multiply it by, by roughly the same amount, you know? So if I wanted this texture to look four times uh, uh, bigger, then I multiply 64 four times. So, or smaller, sorry, four times smaller. So what we can do is hold down one click and then we have a parameter here. And we actually convert it to a parameter and then we call it tiling. Um, now you can get another one, so U and V, and then you can append it. Uh, but uh, for this, I don't. When you download the texture and you see that uh, it's a two two uh, by two, so two x two, then it means it's just basically you need just one uh, number for it. So now we're gonna connect it to the texture size, every single texture size, right, like that, and and then we're gonna have sixty four multiplied by a number. So for example, if I wanted this uh, material to look six, well, four times smaller, then I would get my calculator. I would say 46 times four, it's 255. So we say 255. And then if you apply it, then you see it, it's basically the right size right now. And now if I extend this shape like that, the material tiling won't uh, change. It's consistent. And now you can use your Pretty basic block out to have like walls in the scene. Like for example, if you are making the back rooms, let's say, then you would definitely want to use this kind of material. And you might ask that how the material blending works with this. So it works like this. Let me open up my material. But before I show you, I would like to talk about today's sponsor, me. Hey, my name is Ray, and this is a small YouTube channel. As you can see, we have only a couple hundred subscribers. So. If you like this content and if you want to watch more, then maybe consider subscribing. That would really help me out. Back to the material. So what you would do to blend materials is that you would get uh, two textures, right? So one is black, one is right. And then you would get a lerp node and then you would lerp uh, these two um, with, a, with an alpha, with a mask. And for a mask, I, I usually use a pretty big noise um, just to give it a little... Um, Variation. So, as it's it's procedural, so I think that's the best thing you can do. Um, <clears throat> so now it works the same. You just have to get, you just have to make everything word aligned. So here's my first base color that I'm going to lerp with the other base color, and I make everything word aligned. I use the same texture size, and then I'll just lerp them with a noise texture, and I use. Oops, I just have to connect all of these. Uh, I just realized. So I just lerp them with, with, with the, the mask I want to lerp it with. So that's how that's how we do it. And so this is how it works in the game. Wait, sorry, my character is getting tired. And so this is how it works in the game. So as you can see, everywhere I look, the tiling is going to be um, uniform. Because you know, in real life, you have the same tiles that you you know just put on the walls, so it gives it. It just you know those games where it everything is just stretching a little bit because they made so many materials and they try to adjust it by eyes. So, so that's 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 definitely something that you don't want to do in your game. So there you have it. If you're making like a, a backroom type of game. You definitely want to know this trick because it's a lot easier than making uniform walls and then just copy pasting it each other, uh, to next to each other, right? So, so th this definitely helps your life and just makes it a lot more easier. So thank you very much for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.